Good morning and welcome to the program Dialogue on Liberty Television. My name is Anthony Momodi, welcoming to today's uh, episode. I'll be standing in for your regular host, uh, Chef Yu Suleiman, who is uh, currently under the weather. All right, uh, today's edition will be looking at uh, Nigeria's poor uh, testing capacity, which has been rated one of the worst in the African continent behind countries as small as Djibouti. Uh, recently, April 19th, the NCDC uh, did reveal that it had increased Nigerians' testing capacity from 500 samples in a week to 1,500 daily. Uh, these uh, new increase do uh, contentious but uh, an improvement far improvement from 500 samples uh, in a week to 1500 samples uh, daily all right uh, before we kick into the main discourse which has to do uh, with nigeria's poor testing capacity uh, which will be taking us to discuss with uh, one of nigeria's finest medical personnel and the person of dr ada ikeako uh, who is a mental and public health expert uh, will be uh, uh, getting her via phone to take a look at uh, the recent uh, increase in the cases and Nigeria's uh, poor testing capacity. Also, on uh, the, uh, the next uh, resource person that will be our guest on the second half of the program would be uh, the corporate communications uh, officer of NOI polls, uh, who recently did conduct a poll concerning Nigerians' awareness on COVID-19 and other very, very critical issues uh, as regards the fight against uh, the pandemic. Uh, but before we uh, get uh, the doctor, uh, Dr. Adda online, let's just give a brief uh, lowdown as regards uh, statistics uh, for the 22nd day of uh, April 2022. 20, uh, That's talking about from yesterday, the 21st day. Uh, death toll in Nigeria stands currently at uh, 25. Uh, while we've got a confirmed case number of cases right now in Nigeria, it has hit as much as 782 cases confirmed in Nigeria. Uh, new cases already, it's been pegged at 117 new cases. Uh, recovery uh, cases stands at uh, 100 and 97 uh, persons have recovered while the death toll stands at 25 confirmed cases 782 and the new cases was 117. Uh, the spread of these cases across the 36 states of the federation sees Lagos with the highest number of 59 cases. The FCT follows next with 29 cases. Kanu state has uh, maximum of 14 cases Bornu has six why going to casino casino has got uh, uh, one case there and uh, in ogun state three cases have been confirmed in rivers and bauchi also we've got uh, one case each uh, uh, being confirmed all right uh, also uh, still talking about the issues of uh, the covid 19 in nigeria uh, it's been said that the federal government yesterday uh, from the directive of Mr. President has directed the CJN to release uh, inmates uh, awaiting trial that have been awaiting trials for six years upwards uh, should be released. Uh, that's the order given by President Buhari to the CJN as regards inmates in Nigeria. And it's been said that 42% of Ni uh, Nigerians in prisons, talking about the, out of the 74,000 prisoners we've got in the correctional facilities in the country would see it, uh, benefit from this uh, directive from the president uh, saying that all inmates are waiting trial uh, from six years upwards that have been in detention should uh, be released. Uh, that's uh, the good news coming there in order to help the spread of the coronavirus all right uh, let's go to the foreign scene and give you update as regards uh, uh, what is happening on the global scene as regards uh, covid 19 cases all right uh, it's been said uh, 150 migrants uh, uh, have tested positive in the uh, Kranidi, uh area of uh, Greece where 150 migrants tested positive and they are currently being isolated in a hostel in the outskirts of uh, of greece then also we've got uh, 
interesting statistics uh, coming out from the, the UK on the global scene shows that 823 uh, hospital deaths have been recorded in the uh, UK as regards uh, uh, the hospital death there, that's uh, the daily hospital death there is 823 as of yesterday and the total number of death on the global uh, scene uh, shows uh, 17,338 uh, deaths in total that's uh, looking at uh, the UK and uh, the graphics on your that will be shown on your screen as regards the global update as regards statistics of uh, different uh infections rate across europe will be displayed on your screen for you to uh, get the full graphs of all the other issues on uh the global scene it's also a uh, report also shows us uh, from the us a lot is being done to cushion the effects of uh, the covid 19 pandemic on, on its people and uh, we've got uh, the US approving as much as 480 billion dollars to help small and medium sized uh, businesses or right, uh, so those are the updates uh, you needed to know on the national level and also uh, on the global scene all right uh, we still got uh, Dr. Ada Ikeako on the line uh, who is a public and mental health uh, expert good morning Dr. Ada Good morning. All right, nice to have you join us. Uh, we'd like to know, looking at the statistics uh, concerning uh, the updates given by uh, the NCDC concerning Nigeria's uh, infection rate, uh, which uh, we had uh, 117 new cases, and the uh, total number of confirmed cases has hit 780. 82 and death toll 25 uh recovery 197 would you say uh nigeria's poor testing capacity uh has made it not uh okay for us to get the true statistics of nigerians that are truly infected mm -hmm. you, you are now the testing within the community okay you know go, go to test I'm sure they're now discovering more cases of the coronavirus as they as they expand their testing policy. You know, you're going to need to test between uh, 750,000 to 1 million people every week okay. in order to have an accurate measure of the true spread of coronavirus within the community. So they're testing 1,500 every day, which is maybe less than 10,000 a week, which is roughly insufficient and inadequate. And the plan, the plan is to move from 1,500 testing a day to 7,000 testing a day, which is 42,000 per week, which is still roughly inadequate. Okay. So we're going to need to expand considerably our testing capacity. They have a strategy, the Nigeria CDC, the strategy is to mobilize tuberculosis testing machines and HIV testing machines in order to be able to test for the uh, coronavirus. They want to uh, uh, um, now use those machines, you know, commandeer them to test for coronavirus. But the point is we're going to need to do a lot more testing in order for us to get accurate statistics. All right, uh, looking at the fact, uh, it's been said that uh, we just have 13 uh, testing laboratories uh, to carry out uh, this testing uh, for as much as 200 million uh, persons in Nigeria. Uh, do you think 13 yeah. uh, laboratories are big enough, are enough for a country as big as Nigeria? Yeah, the, the laboratories are, are roughly inadequate. You okay. Need much, many more laboratories. You know, in, in all fairness to the federal government, they started with two laboratories at the beginning of this uh, co coronavirus uh, uh, disease pandemic. Okay. You know, and then they moved, you know, from there. You know, their plan is to get up to 15 laboratories. You know, uh, you know, but they're not still not enough. You know, you need laboratories in every state. You know, you need, you need many more laboratories to be able to test uh, 750,000 people a week. All right. Tell me that 15 labs can handle the volume, you know. All right. Uh, uh, the issue, uh, certain professor 
Oye Wale uh, who, uh, Tomori, who is a professor of biology, uh, did uh, raise yeah. the issue of the fact uh, that the quarantine uh, art of 19, uh, 19, that's, uh, 1960s were not good enough uh, for the fight against uh, the pandemic because uh, the quarantine act did uh, mention that 200 naira uh, fine for whoever violates uh, the lay down procedures and also uh, a J term. Uh, looking at the fact that uh, there are calls for them to repeal uh, the previous act and also enact the 2013 uh, bill that was put forward by Senator Cle Clever uh, from uh, Biosa State, which only ended in the second reading. Uh, how key is it for uh, the policy to be, uh, you know, re repealed and reenacted in order to give it stronger measures against uh, those violating the, uh, the the lockdown measures and other uh, uh, measures meant to curtail the spread? Yeah, you know, you're going to have to remove the tariffs from food. You're going to have to increase the availability of food. You're going to have to increase the product production of food. You cannot ask a large informal sector to stay home when they when they only get what they eat if they go out on a daily basis. You're not going to ask people to go hungry for days, for weeks with no food in their belly and expect them to keep a lockdown order. You know, you have to increase their access to food, you know, at the same time that you're you're giving them a lockdown order. Okay. So I, I didn't get the whole breadth of your question. I couldn't quite hear very well. But I think we need to start talking about stimulus package for companies and for individual Nigerians. You know, that, that's what we should be talking about. How we're removing the tariffs from food. This is what we should be letting the population know about. You know, how we're freezing taxes for now until the coronavirus is under control. These, these are the kind of messages that we need to be out there. The government needs to be out there letting the citizens know. So that when you've done all that, you know, and then you now find people that are breaking the curfew, that have enough food and are being taken care of, then you can then come against them, you know, with the with full measure of the law. All right. Uh, some uh, e uh, persons have raised the issue of uh, private sector uh, hospitals uh, who go ahead to treat uh, COVID-19 patients without uh, due uh, accredit accreditation from the relevant agencies. And it's been said that this uh, could hamper the lockdown uh, measure and the need uh, for only registered uh, uh, medical facilities to handle this issue. How key is it in terms of uh, the private sector hospitals who go ahead to handle cases and thereby uh, cause more community uh, spread in terms of infection? Well, my understanding of what is happening is that people are having to have the COVID. Okay. They don't realize that they have the COVID and they're going to private hospitals for, for, for uh, because they're not feeling well. Okay. You know, I heard in one case there was a woman that was having, needed to have a baby, cesarean section, and she had COVID. I mean, there was a cesarean section, and then the doctor that treated her, gave her that cesarean section, caught the COVID from her, and he died. She died, and he died. Wow. You know, so the, the point is that the government has to work with the private hospitals, you know, to accredit as many of them as possible to be able to deal with COVID. Because whether they are credited or not, COVID patients are coming to the private hospital looking for answers because they're not feeling well. And most of the, the private hospitals don't have enough personal equipment. You know, they don't have enough testing kits. You know, they don't have enough face masks. And so the private, the, 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 this is exposing workers that work in these private hospitals. is exposing them to coronavirus. Coronavirus. You know, so what's happening is that the accreditation has to be broad. It has to be, my opinion is that it has to be widespread. So that these private hospitals can get accredited, they can get the resources they need. You know, so that when these patients are coming from the community with COVID, you know, feeling sick but not knowing what's wrong with them, you know, they, they won't start spreading the virus to health workers who will then spread it to other members of the community or to other health workers. All right. Uh, let's uh, also look at the uh, the issue 
as regards uh, the NCDC, they come out to say, uh, yes, they've got uh, testing centers available, but the issue they had were Nigerians were not coming out uh, for the testing. Uh, what do you think can be done to probably make Nigerians more willing to go out there uh, to uh, get tested? And should that be the case, should uh, NCDC wait for Nigerians to come uh, to their centers for testing or they should go out uh, for uh, testing themselves? Yeah, I mean, this is a marketing issue, in my opinion. I mean, the thing is, we need to get the message to the grassroots about the fact that COVID-19 is in Nigeria and that it's okay. in the community and that it's very important for people to be tested, to come out and be tested. So we need jingles in different languages, Nigerian languages, so that we can reach the grassroots with this message. You know, because some of it is not permeating. If people are still coming out as if nothing is happening in the satellite towns in Abuja and in other places, then it means that they are not understanding the uh, I impact and the significance of community spread of coronavirus. Okay, in, in terms of uh, uh, the actual uh, samples gathering and the testing and uh, test results, we've had issues where the NCDC uh, has been blamed by some state government. We had that of Bauchi uh, that complained that some test results were uh, mixed up with uh, other persons and so the two uh, results were not uh, gotten. How, what can be done to improve the issue of uh, poor uh, results uh, coalition? by the NCDC in order to also help expand our testing capability? Yeah, you know, the thing is the states have to have their own public health uh, teams. You, know, you can't just leave it to the national uh, CDC, the Nigerian CDC at the national level. You know, the states have to be able to collate their own statistics, their own information, their own testing, you know, and, and then, you know, you know, Frequently uh, liaise with the national uh, uh, CDC you know, in order to have uh, better outcomes. You can't just leave everything to the national. You know, what is your strategy at the state level, and you know, how are you planning to source for for testing kits at the state level? You know, so you know, it's important to get direction from the CDC at the national, but it's also important for the states to have their strategy, to have their public health teams, to have their testing labs, you know, and to, to be able to work with uh, leaders in local communities, you know, to be able to work with the local government in order to be able to get more people out for testing. All right, uh, looking at uh, the issue, uh, logistics has been fingered as uh, one of the uh, factors that might limit uh, Nigeria's ability to uh, conduct uh, massive capacity testing. Uh, looking at uh, logistics... Uh, all, all right, I, I want us to look at the issue of uh, logistics in, in uh, achieving uh, better capacity testing. Uh, how key is logistics in ensuring that Nigeria's capacity in testing uh, is uh, better improved? Uh, the thing is, you have to have an international supply chain. Okay. You know, the reagents that are used for testing, the machines that are used for testing, they're not all made right. in Nigeria. So the strength of your testing within Nigeria is the strength of your international supply chain. And this has been under strain generally because many countries, most countries don't have enough test kits. It's not just Nigeria. You know, so you're going to have to source you're going to have to source and leverage your international supply chain. So the logistics have to do with the strength of, of international supply chains. And, you know, this, is a, this was not expected. There was really not much time to plan for this epidemic or pandemic. You know, but now that it's here, you know, we need to know that we have to be prepared moving forward. That we have to, uh, you know, have these things ready. So that it doesn't become a knee-jerk reaction when the pandemic happens. You know, we already have, you know, these supply chains already active and, and ready to go. 
All right, uh, uh, as a mental health uh, expert, uh, let's look at uh, what should be the mindset uh, of, uh, or let's take it from this angle. How, how would you describe the mindset of Nigerians before and during and at this point of the pandemic? Uh, what would you say has been the mindset of Nigerians, the healthcare workers who are the front line, uh, the federal government and uh, other stakeholders in this uh, pandemic fight? Yeah, the uh, healthcare workers are um, on the front line and they don't have enough face masks. They don't have a, a, a PPE, personal protective equipment, okay. you know, visors, the apparel. They don't have them in enough quantities. And so they're exposing them. And they're dying in the process of treating uh, people that have COVID-19 and they're not aware that they have COVID-19 until, until after the fact. So we need to get more masks, millions of more masks. We need to have local production of these masks, local production of these apparel, local production of these visors. We need to shift from international to local production so that we can meet up with it. Now we're going to need millions and millions. One, one thing that helped Japan is that everybody wore a face mask once they left the house. And that was supposed to have ha been attributed to perhaps the... the the low spread after a while in Japan. So, you know, that means 200 million face masks. It's not something that we can, you know, um, you know, rely solely on, on others to do for us. We have to, you know, uh, channel that, you know, to a local industry. A lot of people are hungry, you know, and when you're hungry, you're angry. So the, the thing is to to make food readily available to the 200 million Nigerians. That, that, that's priority. A lot of people are anxious and afraid, you know, and, and uh, you know, a lot of people are grieving for people that they've, they've, uh, they've lost during this period. Some people are worried because they have loved ones that have uh, coronavirus, you know. So there are a lot of emotions that are going on in Nigerians at this moment. And the important thing is for, for Nigerians to not catastrophize, you know, not uh, not uh, to have faith, to have faith in God, to have faith in the government, to have faith in whatever uh, whatever um, spiritual form you believe in, you know, to, to have a routine, to get enough exercise, enough sleep, you know, to... Uh, to, uh, do, do you think? Do you think they hands regularly and and clean their high contact surfaces regularly? All right, uh, let's uh, focus on the healthcare givers on the front line. Do you think they are truly inspired to give more? Uh, looking at the fact that they have uh, limited uh, PPEs and also uh, not being celebrated like we see uh, in other climes where the uh, national uh, health workers uh, seem to be celebrated as heroes. Uh, do you think the Nigerian healthcare workers in the front line uh, have that mindset or have the right mindset uh, to continue this uh, fight against COVID-19, especially with increasing death tolls of uh, health workers? You know, Nigerian health workers are, are wonderful people. They, they're willing to sacrifice. You know, they do, they go above and beyond. You know, but the thing about it, it's tough when you're asking somebody to go into the field, to go into war without any equipment. You know? You're not, you know, uh, you know because that means, that means certain death. You know, so that's not fair. I mean, in the West, you have to go in as a health worker, but you're okay. given all the equipment you need. You know, and even with all the equipment, some, a lot of doctors, over 100 doctors in some countries have died as a result of the spread, the aggressiveness of this uh, coronavirus. But in Nigeria, there's no PPE, there's no protective equipment, very little, very few. And so you expect the doctors to work with no equipment, and, and then surely they will lose their lives, and they have been losing their lives. So the thing is to accredit the, the private sector, you know, as many hospitals as possible. Equip them, you know, channel resources to them so that they can have the proper protective um, attire to be able to treat this highly infectious uh, COVID-19. And that's not happening, unfortunately. All you right. know, they're keeping okay. it to the government hospitals. You know, these uh, the select government hospitals like, are given the, these equipment. But unfortunately, when the patients are coming to the doctor, they don't go to the government hospitals initially. They come to the private sector. And in so doing, they're infecting and killing doctors in the private sector who don't know at that time that they have the COVID-19 and don't have the testing kits to be able to test for the COVID-19. So these are the problems, you know, and, and you know, they're things that can, can, can be solved, but we have to have to political way to solve these problems. All right.
right. Uh, uh, having sp uh, spoken on the health uh, caregivers and their mindset, let's look at the mental uh, state of mind of Nigerians generally uh, before and now that uh, the death toll is beginning to rise and many states are beginning to get uh, index cases. Uh, what do you think is the mindset of Nigerians before and uh, what should be their mindset uh, as this uh, challenge gets tougher? Yeah, you know, it's an anxious, it's an anxious mindset. There's a time, you know, a lot of things have had to change in a short period of time without the required time to effect that change. So, you know, it's a flight of fight response. It's a system on the siege. The individual is on the siege. And when that happens, you know, certain aspects of your brain are activated. Your amygdala is activated. Your hippocampus the hypothalamus is activated. And what that does is that it secretes a lot of hormones into the body, cortisol, no epinephrine, epinephrine, which causes a lot of vasoconstriction. Your blood pressure goes up, your heart rate goes up, okay. your respiratory rate goes up. Okay. You know, and you get ready to either take a stand or to run away. And that's what coronavirus is doing to the individual Nigerians. It is activating a physiological cascade within everybody's body that you're under danger and a threat is coming and that you have to do something about it. So these are very tense times and, and people are very anxious and worried and fearful, you know, but the thing is to do your own part, you know, to wear face masks, wear uh, 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 protective equipment, you know, uh, wear hand gloves, sanitize the high contact surfaces, wash right. your hands frequently with soap and wa running water, use alcohol hand sanitizers frequently. You know, these are things that you can do to mitigate catching the virus. Can we say the this uh, anxiety in Nigerians uh, is the reason why we had uh, as many as 18 deaths uh, due to the enforcement of the lockdown measure by security agents to the citizenry. Uh, can you look at the mental state of mind of uh, the, the security agencies who have been uh, accused or recorded to have killed 18 persons in Nigeria uh, in the course of trying to enforce this? Can you say the state of mind uh, which you just mentioned of the citizens uh, as against that of the security agents and the government. Are you asking me the state yeah. of mind? Of yes, the, yes, the, the, is that what yes, yes. Is that the reason why we had so much uh, deaths uh, by security agents w w in the course of enforcing the lockdown measures? Yeah, you know, I always, I always believe that uh, the police response to public unrest should be measured. Okay. You know, because because people do have a right to protest. That's that's a fundamental human right. So I, I think I don't know the circumstances, the exact circumstances of this of these deaths and what happened. You know, I haven't listened to the police to hear their side of the story. So I'd have to definitely get to know more. You know, but I, I believe that police response should always be measured. It should it shouldn't be the police should not should should reserve deadly force. For when it's absolutely necessary, not not just uh, you know applying it willy nilly. All right. Uh, in terms of uh, expanding Nigeria's uh, capacity, testing capacity, uh, yeah. what other areas or what other factors can be brought into uh, board to ensure that our testing capacity is uh, improved drastically in order to uh, yeah. to help? Yeah. yeah, you have to work with the states. Okay. You have to work with local government areas. You know, they have to have their own labs. You know, you have the thing is you're, you're going to have to source for it internationally. So you're leveraging on on uh, on 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 who you know, where you know. You know, and because they're scarce everywhere. Okay. These, these testing kits are scarce in the U.S. They're scarce in Europe. You know, so you have to know where who is producing it how to get aligned with the people that are producing it to increase the, the bombers. Okay. You know, so, so, so it's, it's your international supply chain, your, your, your leverage, you know, so, yeah, talking more with the state government. All right, uh, let's... Uh
still talking about uh, let's just look at uh, uh, for the number in terms of the media now in terms of the news being carried uh, how well would you say the media has contributed in trying to help Nigeria's uh, capacity testing capacity being improved in terms of uh, the kind of messages okay. that go out would you say the messages have been more uh, scary and not encouraging or would you say uh, the messages are just the right kind of message in terms of the death okay. toll the uh, you know, infection rate and all that you know you know, when you're in a state of fear, your immune system shuts down okay. and you become more vulnerable to the virus. That's the point. Okay. So we need more success stories. All the people that survived, we need to know how they survived, you know, what happened to them that they survived. You know, we need to have more success stories because fear, which is what the Nigerian population is experiencing now, leads to a low, immu a low immunity, okay. which makes you more vulnerable to get the virus. Okay. So let's see uh, more faith-based stories, more stories of success, of, of survivors. All right. Uh, uh, still looking at improving and just capa uh, testing capacity uh, to the NCDC. What can the NDC do? NCDC do now to probably encourage more Nigerians to come out uh, for testing, and uh, and also what can be done to ensure that this lockdown is not uh, extended because of the lack of uh, testing capacity of Nigeria. Yeah. Yeah, that's the problem. You know, one of the major factors that you look at to end the lockdown is the infection rate. The infection rate is calculated based on positive tests. Okay. So you have to test enough people. You know, so that's what's hindering the lockdown from from being discontinued with lack of testing. You know, and so we may need to get more tests. We're moving in the right direction, but. It's still far less than uh, what is desirable. Okay. You know, so we, not, we need to keep doing what we're doing, more of it. Okay. Nigeria CDC. You know, and hopefully we'll be able to get more tests. You know, and then we can calculate an accurate, a more accurate infection rate, and then start to open up the economy, starting with the private sector. Okay. Because the economy hinges on the, on the private sector, you know, so it will be a gradual, stepwise reopening of the economy, with with a with a view a view of the of the infection rate in mind. Okay. All right. Uh, just to wrap it up, uh, looking at uh, what will be your recommendation to the NCDC uh, in terms of uh, spreading out uh, more, uh, getting more testing uh, being done, and also for on the part of uh, uh, internet getting international support. Uh, what will be your advice to the Nigerian government, knowing fully where that? Yeah. Okay. Moving from two, two, two testing centers to nine testing centers, ultimately moving to 15 testing centers. But we need many more testing centers. You know, it's a good job for taking tuberculosis testing machines and HIV testing machines and uh, leveraging them to test for coronavirus. But we need much, many more testing machines and m much more testing in the hundreds of thousands per week. You know, so I would say, you know, continue to leverage your international supply chain, you know, and, you know, continue to strengthen those types of roads, you know, so that you can have access to more testing kits so that we can, you know, get a good infection rate that's based on data. Okay. And so that we can gradually, in a stepwise manner, reopen the economy. All right. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Dr. Ada Ikeako, for uh, your contribution uh, on today's uh, edition of the program Dialogue as we look at uh, Nigeria's poor testing capacity. Thank you very much. Thank you, everybody. Thank you, Anthony. Thank you.
All right, uh, we'll be going for a quick break. Uh, when we return, we'll be going to the second half of the program dialogue. We'll be looking at uh, statistics uh, coming out uh, from one of West Africa's uh, uh, renowned uh, polling company, NOI Polls, uh, who did a survey recently on the COVID-19 awareness of Nigerians and how uh, it's going to affect uh, Nigeria's testing capacity. Uh, we'll do that after the break. Uh, hold on and uh, go nowhere. It's not just about the individual news item, it's all about what's behind the news story. What went on before, now and after. We report today not from Kaduna, Nigeria, but from Liverpool in the United Kingdom. Slavery Museum, that's right, in Liverpool. Dr. Benjamin. No personal attack on, our, on candidates. <laughs> okay, yeah. thank you very much. Great TV Liverpool. I'm here with uh, Chris Kerr, who is one of the team that runs this uh, remarkable little station. Um, I, my background is that I'd spent quite a lot of time working for Bernardo Sullivan as a reporting producer. And I had a, a, lived in Liverpool for most of my life and I've had a very strong interest in doing something in the way of more local television, more than the regional service which Bernardo the BBC offered. This is Arthur Brook signing off from Liberty Global Reports and have a very good week. Thank you, Saidu, for coming on the programme. My pleasure. And please check out our Facebook page. Right, welcome back uh, from the break. You're watching Dialogue on Liberty Television. My name is Anthony Momodu, standing in for Sheffield Suleiman. All right, uh, we're in the second half of the program. We'll be talking to uh, West Africa's uh, renowned uh, polling company known as NOI Polls. And we'll be speaking with the lead corporate communications uh, manager and the person of Bituku Adedoi, who will be giving us update as regards uh, uh, the poll recently conducted right here all right uh, the polls uh, we've got uh, a doing a do doing in on the phone line uh, so that we can speak with you good morning sir good morning Anthony. nice to have you join us on dialogue thank you very much for having me all right uh, we just want to uh, look at the polls highlights uh, which uh, NY polls are uh, conducted recently as regards uh, Nigeria's awareness of COVID-19 uh, very interestingly, 99% of Nigerians say they are aware uh, that uh, COVID-19 exists in uh, the, the country. And uh, it also shows that 15% increase uh, from your March polls, uh, uh, Nigerians' awareness. Uh, how key is the, the fact that 99% of Nigerians are aware of COVID-19? Uh, and looking at Nigeria's poor testing capacity, which the NCDC says is because Nigerians are not coming out for testing. How does the poll uh, perceive this, looking at the number of Nigerians aware of the, the existence of COVID-19? Uh, thank you very much, Anthony. So, um, through the um, course of our um, polling and, and findings, we discovered that 99% um, of Nigerians but we have conducted this poll before, like you rightly said, you know, in, the, um, in, in March. Um, March okay. Where we discovered that 84% of Nigerians, as at that time, um, indicated that they are aware of the coronavirus, um, which is the COVID-19. And we see more, most of the, um, you know, most of that coming from 
the northern region of the country. Okay. Um, now, um, in April, we decided to run this, um, you know, this report, this survey again, where we found out that that number had already increased to 99 percent, and which is a good, good thing, you know, um, on one side, and um, there's a flip side to it. But on the good side, you know, this means that the the efforts of the NCDC and um, that of the National Orientation Agency, the media such as Liberty TV. You know, uh, and all that well meaning Nigerians, you know, the, their efforts are really coming to play here. You know, this is virtually all Nigerians, you know, saying that they are aware of the disease. However, there is a flip side to it. You know, being aware and doing something about the knowledge are two different things in this line of our, our of polling. And it's something that we've noticed over time. You know, um, being aware is one thing. And we see that the largest rate of um, awareness comes from the northern region. Okay. But in recent times, we've been saying that despite the, uh, the amount of awareness, people are still flouting, you know, um, um, preventive measures, you know, that have been stated by the NCDC. So, yes, it's good that people are aware of the COVID-19 um, pandemic. Okay. However, what they are doing with the knowledge is, you know, leaves a little to be desired. Okay. Even in the FCT, you still see people flaunting the rules. I mean, this is this is a pandemic that is killing people on the on a very very huge scale. All and right. at this morning, worldwide, there are one hundred and seven, seven hundred and ninety six deaths. You know, um, in in the in, in the world, even though yes, there are about six hundred and eighty six um, people that have recovered. Okay. But if we look at it on a global scale, that's two point five million yes. people are, across the world who have been affected by this disease. I think it's something that people need to take more seriously and not just know what the disease is about, but have an understanding that, you know, um, especially with the rate of asymptomatic um, cases, All right. you know, it could be anywhere, it could be anywhere. All right. And like what you rightly said this morning, that our testing capacity is still very, very low. And it is no um, news that, um, you know, Nigeria is at this point. However, it is what we choose to do with this understanding that, that, that matters. All right, 6% of Nigerians uh, say it is not real. What does this represent uh, in terms of the, uh, if you look at the six geopolitical zones of Nigeria, when you say 6% uh, say it is not real, uh, can you take us through which uh, areas of Nigeria uh, people think is not real and the consequences yeah. of that? Yeah, so um, in, in the course of this, um, uh, between when we first conducted the poll and okay. when we decided to conduct the poll, the second poll, we discovered that there were rumors of people stating that, you know, um, the COVID-19 is, is a hoax, is the propaganda, and we okay. tried to put some numbers to it. While 94% of Nigerians say it is real, however, 6% of Nigerians say that it is, it is just a propaganda, it is fake. And we have seen most of these people come from the south east and from the south south. Okay. You know, and and this, this can have some leverage based on the fact that in those two um, geopolitical zones, they record the lowest rate of, um, of um, the you know, pandemic. The COVID 19 okay. pandemic, you know, compared to the nationwide um, poll. And so it is easy for them to say, oh, it, you know, it's a hoax, you know, it is not real. However, I think it's incumbent on their government to ensure that people know the severity of this and the importance of why they need to, you know, caution it. A lot of, um, uh, of, of data is running out right now, and experts are saying that, you know, the northern um, part of Nigeria might just be the next epicenter of this disease if care is not taken. Especially looking at the poverty and the illiteracy and index of that geopolitical zone, we can't afford you know, a case where people think, where people go around uninformed or misinformed. All right, uh, let's look at, uh, we've got 28% of Nigerian adults saying they think they are immune to COVID-19. Uh, what is the consequence of these uh, when 28% of Nigerians say they think they are immune to uh, COVID-19? And which part of the country do we have this 28% spread? Yes, again, um, I mean, this, um, this belief is also centered, uh, focused majorly around the Southeast and the South South region, especially right. the Southeast region of the country. 
and um, they have different you know reasons for this some say they believe in god which is the same thing as what was um gotten you know okay. uh, same, uh, same results that we got you know in the first poll however i think this time around people are more cautious with um this um belief in that you know at first you know when we had asked them do you think they are, they are immune to to this it came up as you know an overconfident statement saying okay. that they are immune that no matter what they cannot get it however now there is a little bit of truth where they are still using basically the same context however um, um i think the, the underlining um, factors here okay. differ a little bit you know people are trying to stay more optimistic now so now is more of a proclamation of faith than you know an abuse of religion so people are saying that they, they, they believe in god and that will make them immune however believing in god does not just make you immune you know it's important that people also follow the uh, preventive measures which is why i'm actually happy to see that 35 percent of nigerians say that you know that they are um they follow preventive measures and this is quite good because so far this is the best case this is the best um, reason for anyone to feel that you know they stand the better chance. Of course, we see 11 percent of Nigerians saying that you know they are they are black, they are African, and so it will not affect them, which is a lie. Um, we see people um, talk about our weather, and people who talk about they eat good food. All of these do not um, do not um, translate into anything if they are not you know taking preventive measures. All right, uh, uh, looking at the NCDC, who is at the forefront of the COVID-19 fight, uh, uh, the, the polls did uh, throw up something very interesting but uh, worrisome. It, it says uh, Nigerians rate NCDC 6.97 uh, out of 10 uh, for providing uh, information and updates, then six point, uh, we've got 6.36 out of 10 for provision of uh, text kits and testing for Nigerians. Does that show any encouraging level of belief in the NCDC that uh, they are uh, the right persons to lead the fight against COVID-19? Well, I think, you know, this is the first time um, we're experiencing this. This is the first time the nation has had to you know, really depend on this organization, this okay. institution. And I think so far they are doing quite well. Of course, like um, Dr. Adak said, there is always room for improvement, All right. especially in reaching the grassroots, which is something I would like to, you know, emphasize. Reaching the grassroots, ensuring that they understand what the disease is, what the issue is in their own language in their own language that is the underlying factor you know uh, uh, and ensuring that people don't just know you know what the disease is about it is also important for um um uh, uh, you know for, for credible data to also back these things up because when you just tell someone that oh coronavirus is out and um, these are the symptoms these are the people affected it does not um, register in their mind until when it is something that they can relate to. With statistics. And that is something we found out even in the line of our um, data analysis and acquisition. Until people can relate to something, they will probably not take it as seriously as they need it to be. Okay. So I think that there is, there is a room for NCDC to try to reach out to people and, 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 and you know, pass the information in a language that they understand. For some people it differs, for some people it takes action, for some people it takes data, for some people it takes, you know, the language barrier. But I think it's up to them to ensure that, you know, while we are putting this much trust in them, All you right. know, there's also room for improvement. All right. CDC in terms of okay. providing testing, you know, that is another issue. However, on both cases, we see them scoring above the 6.0 um, mark which is a B, you know, if you look at it, you know, in the academic context. Okay. All right. Uh, still looking at uh, the tr uh, improving Nigeria's test capacity and the belief of Nigerians on the NCDC and the federal government. Your polls did suggest or repeat that Nigerians uh, do not have so much faith in the federal government in this leading this fight against COVID-19. Uh, your, your polls shows that five points 
647 uh, was uh, the rating given to the federal government in terms of uh, uh, provision of the needed facility or leading the fight. Then they've got a 4.55 out of 10 uh, for provision of adequate palliatives for Nigerians. Tell me how these two things uh, would affect Nigeria's testing capacity as we wrap up. Yes, uh, um, I think it's quite important because if you look at, um, so 87% of Nigerians say that, you know, they are concerned about the lockdown. And the major um, reasons for this concern is due to, um, you know, survival um, instincts, you know, okay. Um, uh, um, resources such as food, uh, money, and the rest. All right. So in terms of that, we see that Nigerians are rating the government about 4.5 out of 10, which is, you know, really a, 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 a poor, a poor mark. And I think it's time for, for government to look at this type of um, data and ensure that where they are channeling their palliative measure, their relief materials and resources to, is what people directly need. So um, it is not enough for you to just give out money. What they spend on, like Dr. Adam rightly said, is also important to ensure that what they spend on is readily available and readily affordable. Because a lot of things have already skyrocketed, the prices of goods and services have skyrocketed. And what 20,000 could buy a month ago, in fact, two weeks ago, is not what 20,000 can buy anymore right now. So even though we are giving out um, cash to people, it's also important to ensure that what they um, buy or um, what they choose to um, buy, that in terms of food and other relief materials, um, um, medicines and the rest, is very, very affordable. In fact, it should be subsidized at this point to ensure that people go out less. Because if they can afford to buy more, people can save more in their house, people can store more in their house, and they don't need to go out and suffer. All right, uh, just to wrap it up now, uh, looking at uh, the survey, how does it help Nigeria's uh, capacity uh, testing uh, to get more improved? Which agencies uh, should uh, key into this uh, uh, re uh, result of this data? Yes, I think this, is, this data is quite good for the um, federal government, for the NCD. In fact, virtually every major stakeholder, because okay. some, some percent of Nigerians already give um, support to the federal government concerning the lockdown, lockdown okay. and you know even five percent are saying that it's not sufficient enough so people are willing to support the government you know in ensuring that we quickly kick off this disease and bring that nigeria's economy to where it used to be you know and even better even even at this period all right, thank you very much. Uh, that's uh, the co uh, lead corporate uh, communications uh, manager of NOI Pools, uh, one of West Africa's uh, leading polling uh, firms, uh, giving us uh, uh, the uh, uh, result of the survey conducted recently. All right, uh, that's how we'll be calling to wrap on today's edition of the program, Dialogue on Liberty Television. Special thanks to the entire production team uh, for work we're done and for you at home for being part of today's episode. Uh, this is hoping that you have a very beautiful day ahead. Make sure you adhere strictly uh, to the lockdown uh, rules and regulations of washing your hands with soap and water, using sanitizers and wearing your face mask and gloves uh, when moving into the public. My name is Anthony Momodu saying thank you very much and wishing you a very, very beautiful day ahead.